So I have mouse, but then if I just tap... Ooh, look at that. I'm just tapping, I'm not clicking. I mean, you can see how lightly... But then middle, I have a full mouse trackpad. Focus, focus. All right, so let me tell you a little story. Hanging out over on the old Steam Controller Discord, you know, talking Steam Controller shop talk, and Meninth, one of the users, opened up my eyes and my mind to an amazing idea. So this is sort of an evolution of the mode shift D-pad. If you've watched previous videos, you could put a mode shift click on the right pad, and that would open up a whole lot of possibilities. You could put other functions on the clicks. So this is sort of, uh, it's, it's not so much an evolution, it's just, it's a different approach, but what this will do is, so I have mouse, but then if I just tap, ooh, look at that. I'm just tapping, I'm not clicking. I mean, you can see how lightly, but then middle, I have a full mouse trackpad. You know, so it allows me to be moving. Where's that coming from? You know, so it allows me to be moving and then roll. Dang it, I'm trying to explain stuff. Uh, uh, totally unrelated, this is Overload. I'm just playing the demo and holy crap, do I need to buy this game? Because <laughs> this is, oh, I mean, I, I have memories of Descent. So yeah, this is amazing. But anyways, I just wanted to tell that little story first because this is completely not my idea. I got his permission to share this, but I also would highly recommend you check out his channel. Come over to the Steam Controller Discord, chat him up, give him some love. Because yeah, this is a really cool idea. He linked me to one of his videos just to sort of explain it so I could see exactly what he was talking about. And then once I did that, like, oh yeah, that's that's a pretty cool idea. So for his, he was making a profile for Dark Souls. And he, he was putting it on the uh, left pad. So you could, like, tap to change... So you could tap to change your uh, item selections and such. So the approach is basically, it's the same thing as... It's, it's the same essential idea as the mode shift but we're using an action layer instead. So, and it's, well, like the way he explained, the way he was explaining it is like thinking of it as an umbrella. So you have your mouse, and then when you're not using the mouse, the umbrella opens and you have all this other stuff. But to set it up, you need to put all this on the default. So on my default pad, I just very basically, you know, set in my functions. I gave each one, um, I gave them high haptics in each, well, I guess I'll show that. In each activator, I gave it high haptic because I don't want the center one to have high haptics. So then here's where it gets pretty funky. So we have, you want to inverse the outer ring. So basically we just have, you know, a circle on the inside of this pad is going to take us to the mouse. And I did that on a start press with no haptics because I don't want it I don't want it stroking around. I just just take me to the mouse pad. So then in the mouse pad mouse layer mouse action layer is all the same you know, set it up to your sensitivity. And then additional settings, touch binding. On a release press, remove this layer and go back to the default, which gives me the taps. So, you know, as I'm touching this, 
I have a full touchpad for my mouse. But then just a, a quick little tap. And you can fiddle around with the, um, the dead zone, because really it's going to be determined by this dead zone. This dead zone and the outer ring, which we're turning into an inner ring by inverting it, the radius of that stuff. And then one other oddity that I noticed, which for this game doesn't mind, I don't mind it because I've, you know, I've put it to be a pretty sensitive mouse, but I don't, and this is just mainly from applying it to this right pad with a mouse. If you have trackball mode on, the, even though my thumb's not on it, the emulation of that trackball friction is not allowing me to unload. So, like, we're spinning, I'm pushing, nothing's happening. I have to wait until it stops, then take it off. Which is kind of a weird one. I don't know how... To... I mean, uh, I could do maybe a start press. I feel... No, I feel like that... I'm not going to try to solve that problem right now. You can fiddle around. You might find a solution. I'm concerned if I do a start press, though, then that's going to unload it immediately. It's... And that's going to bring the whole House of Cards illusion tumbling down. So, I am perfectly fine with just turning trackball mode off for this. That's it. That's all I have. It's a cool trick. I wanted to share it. Give credit to him. Check his channel out. Come over to the Steam Controller Discord. Dis Steam Controller Discord. <laughs> Words not talking good. It's part of, um... I feel like once you break through the learning curve for the Steam Controller, you really start to get into... You start... All of this is garbage. <laughs> you really start to to find ways to... You can stick everything... You just need triggers and thumbs, and you can get every, pretty much everything in there. I mean, I do... I guess I do enjoy my grips. I use those a lot. But really, it's like... It's moving away from ever having to lose movement or camera control. Everything, you know, that to me, that's sort of that sort of final form. You know, final form Steam controller user. You get away from using, from ever having to get your thumbs out of quick access to your movement and camera. Which is really breaking through that hurdle, making you competitive with mouse and keyboard users. So yeah, that is pretty damn cool. And kudos to him for figuring this out. <laughs> it's, it's an awesome little advanced technique. So, Alright, that is all I got. I will see you around.